I can read Midnight Sun. Ah! Hey guys, it's Story. Welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, I am Story and I am a Twihard. <laughs> it feels so, uh, uh. I don't know how to start this video. I've got a lot of mixed emotions and feelings and I don't know how to introduce this. How do I introduce this? My favorite author of all time is coming out with a new book August 4th 2020 and it is Midnight Sun. It's been a big day for me. <laughs> I found out about Midnight Sun eight hours ago. There has been a countdown on Stephanie Meyer's website and I have said to everyone it is not Midnight Sun. Stop thinking it's Midnight Sun. She has said many times that she's not doing Midnight Sun. So today we're going to be talking about my theory over the cover and what the cover means and stands for. I actually know what all of the Twilight covers mean and stand for. I'm going to do a whole another video on that explaining the covers and the titles of the Twilight Saga, but today we're going to be talking about Midnight Sun and why Midnight Sun is so important to us Twihards. Do we still say Twihard? I don't know. We used to say Twihard back in the day. It's a weird time right now. But I'm also going to talk about the history of the Twilight Saga. Just so I can recap anyone that doesn't know about Midnight Sun, maybe you didn't even read the books, maybe you've read the books and no, I think everyone's seen the movies. Maybe you've seen the movies, you've never read the books, you don't understand the whole hype about Midnight Sun and I don't know if just book people know about this or like everyone knows about this. We've waited 13 years for Midnight Sun to come out so I'm just gonna go ahead and stop. I feel like I can't breathe <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the video because I will talk about Twilight forever. If you've watched my channel for a while you know this but before I start the video I will say I do not allow any hate on Twilight on my channel. Okay, everyone's entitled to their own opinions. Just don't comment it on this video. All right, so let's get started. Also introducing my co-host that's giving me tiny kisses right now is Miss Mava. Say hi, YouTube. Okay, so first I'm going to wrap up really quickly the history of the Twilight Saga, and then I will get into Midnight Sun, why it is so important to us Twilight fans, and discuss why the book cover looks the way it does, and why the book title is called Midnight Sun. Also, I have another theory I'm gonna pop in there real quick, which you'll see, so let's just go ahead and get into it. So it all started on June 2nd, 2003, when Stephanie Meyer had a dream. Essentially, her dream was about Bella and Edward, so it was a human girl girl and a vampire boy that were in a dark meadow. Stephanie knew these two people were in love, but the trick was the vampire thirsted for her blood, obviously, so he is having difficulty being in love with her because he's on the verge of killing her, basically. We all know what Twilight is. If you're wondering what the dream was and how it played out, you can just read chapter 13 of Twilight because this is what Stephanie wrote first. She wrote chapter 13, which was this dream, and then she worked around that afterwards. It took Stephanie a total of three months to write Twilight, which is not long at all and eventually she got signed to Little Brown and Company, a book publisher, where she signed a three book deal for $750,000. And then it began. Twilight was published in 2005 where it reached number five on the New York Times bestseller list. The sequel, New Moon, came out in 2006 and spent 50 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. And then the third book came out which is Eclipse and it came out in 2007 and it spent 143 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. And last but not least, the fourth book, Breaking Dawn, came out in 2008, where 3.7 million copies were sold, 1.3 million just in the first day. And altogether, they sold over 100 million copies, which made over $3.3 billion in sales. Stephanie Meyer is the first author ever to have four books claim the top four spot on the USA Today's bestseller list. In 2008, and 2009. Two years later in 2010, Stephanie Meyer came out with the first novella and the only novella in the Twilight Saga, which is The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner. This is a novella that is between the third and fourth book, Eclipse and Breaking Dawn. Five years later in 2015, Stephanie came out with another book, but this time things were a little different. This was in celebration of the 10 year anniversary of Twilight, the original book coming out. And to honor that, she released Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined. So Stephanie has taken every 
female in the original Twilight story and has made them male. Every male in the original Twilight story she has made female. So we are following Bo, the human who falls in love with Edith the vampire. Fast forward to five more years and it is 2020 and we have been blessed <laughs> with Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. It is dropping August 4th, 2020 and I'm so excited for it. And this is a great introduction into my first theory. So if you paid attention to the years, then you know that Brie Tanner was 2010, Life and Death was 2015. Now Midnight Sun is 2020. So what's gonna happen in 2025? I'm glad you asked because I have the answer, or at least I think I have the answer. <laughs> I think in 2025, she is going to release the story of Jacob and Renezme after the events of the Twilight Saga. This is a big thing Twilight fans talk about all the time. This was one of the options for the book she was going to come out with this year. I still can't believe it's Midnight Sun. I am still in shock. I thought it was anything but Midnight Sun, so I was pleasantly surprised. But what I'm going to do is hold that theory right there, come back to it at the end, because now I need to explain Midnight Sun to the people that have no idea what Midnight Sun is. So in this wonderful series, we are following Bella Swan, the human in the relationship. But what about Edward Cullen? Midnight Sun is Edward's version of Twilight. So we have fully gone through the Twilight story. It is over and done with. Stephanie Meyer is blessing us with Edward's version of Twilight. Doesn't seem that crazy, right? It gets better. If you paid attention to the dates, then you know that Breaking Dawn came out in 2008. Well, Midnight Sun kind of did too, or at least the first half of it. But the thing is, is that Stephanie Meyer didn't release it. I'm really hyping this book up here. But basically, Midnight Sun got leaked. And then we had to wait 13 years for the release of it because of one person. I'm just happy that we're getting it, okay? I did not think it was a thing. Stephanie Meyer has talked so many times about how she is not releasing Midnight Sun. I actually have a statement I'm gonna read here in a minute. Stephanie Meyer does this thing where she will write the first half of the book and then put it down. When she gets an idea, she writes half of the book and then she puts it away. So she has a lot of half books in her inventory, her Dropbox, her Google Drive, whatever she uses. I can't remember if Midnight Sun was leaked before Breaking Dawn or after Breaking Dawn. For some reason, I believe that it was before Breaking Dawn came out. I personally started reading Twilight right before Breaking Dawn came out. Twilight the movie came out the same year that Breaking Dawn was released, but they did have the entire saga completed before they released the movies. In my head, the timeline was Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, Midnight Sun leak, Breaking Dawn, movie start. Could remember that wrong, but I started Twilight before Breaking Dawn came out. And the reason I think that is because I actually read Midnight Sun before any of the Twilight Saga books. My best friend at the time was reading Eclipse. She told me the plot of it, went online to stephaniemeyer.com and I was just looking at the books. I don't remember Breaking Dawn being on there, but Midnight Sun was on there. Why it was on stephaniemeyer.com? Because it got leaked. They wanted everyone to read the book on Stephanie Meyer's website, obviously, so that it'll be under her name and you have to go to the website to read it. I can't remember how many chapters I read of Midnight Sun, but I read a few of them and then I started the Twilight Saga. And when I finished it, I came back to Midnight Night Sun, read it through and loved it because Edward is my favorite character, like of all time, Edward Cullen is my favorite character. But now I'm doing my reread of Twilight. So this is perfect because I'm on Breaking Dawn. So all I have to read is Breaking Dawn and then I can read Midnight Sun. Ah! Anyways, here's what Stephanie Meyer said about the leak. When the manuscript of Midnight Sun made its way illegally onto the internet in 2008, Meyer called it a huge violation of my rights as an author, not to mention me as a human being. She made a fragment available to read from her website, but put the project on hold indefinitely, saying that if I tried to rewrite Midnight Sun now in my current frame of mind, James, the vampire tracking Bella, would probably win and all the Cullens would die, which wouldn't dovetail too well with the original story. She began Midnight Sun as a writing exercise. The more I wrote, the more I became convinced that Edward deserved to have his story told. She wrote on her website, at first I was planning to post it all here on my website, but I changed my mind for two reasons. The most important being that Edward's version is much longer than Bella's. Edward overthinks everything. If you're a Twilight fan, you know that. She later said that she would never write about the Twilight universe again. I get further away from Twilight every day. For me, it's not a happy place to be. I don't like that last part. <laughs> Fun fact, the reason that she wrote or got the idea for Life and Death was because of Fifty Shades of Grey. If you don't already know, Fifty Shades of Grey is Twilight fan fiction. I can actually tell you the parallels where, where they 
set up because you know I, I yeah so this is why it's a big deal okay we got half the first half of Midnight Sun and then we just didn't get anything and for people like me whose favorite character is Edward Cullen it's it's like everything you can't read the first half of Midnight Sun on the website anymore obviously she is publishing the book now I'm gonna be filming a release day vlog I've done a couple of those on my channel before but this is gonna be like the most intense one trust me it's a lot for me right now it's a lot. It's a lot. She said it's a crazy time right now and I wasn't sure if it was the right time to put this book out But some of you have been waiting for just so long. It didn't seem right to make you wait any longer I just love that she did that. It's just it's just such a good thing There's been so much good energy since this has happened I know it just happened like eight hours ago like I said, but it's just been great and I can't breathe because I am so excited now finally on to midnight sun so, do we like the cover? Do we not? I'm getting a lot of mixed opinions I'm seeing. A lot of people said they didn't like the cover, but then I started seeing a couple people say they like the cover. I like the cover. I'll like anything she does, honestly. If you would like a better explanation of why all of the covers look the way they do, I will be filming a video for that. I'll also be filming a video where I explain why the titles are what they are. So if you don't know either of those, stay tuned for those videos. The subscribe button is down below if you want to be notified. Anyways, as we all know, now, Twilight has an apple on the cover. Why is there an apple on the cover, you ask? Long story short, the covers of the Twilight Saga represent Bella, our main character. So the apple represents Bella here, the flower represents Bella, the ribbon, and the chess pieces. Also, this is the reimagined apple. So instead of a woman holding a red apple, it is a man holding a green apple. Obviously, because everything's opposite, so it makes sense. For Brie Tanner, this represents Brie Tanner, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It goes with the title of the book. The reason Bella is represented by a red apple is because it deals with temptation and seduction and want versus need, morals, sins, the whole shebang. Bella is this fragile little red apple. She's delicious. You want to bite into it, but you'll destroy it if you do. This is a bit of a play on the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. As we know, the story goes, Eve bites the apple, which is the first sin. And if you know anything about Twilight, you know about Edward's inner monologue is very um, morals versus sins, which I'll get into in just a minute with Midnight Sun. That is the basis of this. Bella is Edward's red apple. For Midnight Sun, however, we know that this is a pomegranate and it's not just a pomegranate. It is not this perfect red apple like we see on the Twilight cover. It is a pomegranate that is bitten twice, so it looks like someone has bit bitten into it on both sides. Like I said, all of these covers represent Bella, so since we are getting Edward's version of Twilight, the pomegranate represents Edward. Just like how the hourglass represents Brie on this book. Whatever is on the cover, it represents the main character of that book, which makes sense. <laughs> so if you know anything about Twilight and Edward Cullen's character, it is that there is a constant battle in his head. Edward never wanted to be, to him, an abomination. He feels like his soul is damned because he is a vampire. Essentially, Edward was a pretty good guy. He has morals. I mean, we know him as a character to be a pretty good dude. He is the good guy, even though he says he's the bad guy. Still my favorite quote in the movie. And all I can see when I look at this book cover is that his conflicting internal monologue. And Bella kind of plays a way in that too. He does not feel like he deserves Bella. This is the reason why he left her in New Moon. He wants her to live and have a happy life. He doesn't want to damn her as well. Obviously, she's going to become a vampire so he's damning her as well. He is destroying her soul and he does not want that. The reason I see this in this cover is because a pomegranate just like that apple is beautiful, juicy, it's delicious, but this pomegranate is pretty fucked up because it has been bitten into. I think there are bite marks just to represent that he's a vampire and it has kind of turned his life obviously, but in his mind, not for the best, for the worst. He is damned because of it and it is this conflict with him. It is always morals versus sins. It's always good guy versus bad guy. Not having a soul versus when he did. Not feeding on humans so that he can make up for that. I think the reason why the seeds are just like spread out and they are ripping is just because Bella just intensifies all of that as we know the story goes along. So yeah, that's my theory on the book cover. And if you want to know the other book covers, then stay tuned for that video 
video but to get into the title basically this is the same thing as the covers Edward is the midnight sun so if you don't already know what Twilight is it is that time when it is in between day and night so it is either or no Sun I mean there could be a moon but you guys all know what Twilight is right it's like in between day and night so Edward is the midnight Sun the thing is there's no Sun at midnight so what is the midnight Sun it's the moon <laughs> Not trying to confuse you or anything. The reason new moon is called new moon is because Edward is gone. So there is no moon. If you know what a new moon is, it's when the moon is completely invisible to us. So even though it actually is there, we think it's not. Edward is new moon and new moon, I guess. So in midnight sun, he is min he's the midnight sun. He's the moon. Makes sense? So even though the covers represent Bella, the titles are about Edward. So once Edward enters her life, once he leaves her life, once there's kind of a conflict and we all know what that is. And then Breaking Dawn, when Bella finally becomes who she's always supposed to be, a vampire. And that is all I have for you. If you have any questions or you want to talk about Midnight Sun or Twilight in general, please leave me a comment down below. I would love to talk about Twilight. Usually I feel bad talking about Twilight because everyone gives me crap for it because it just gets hated on so much. It's trash to so many people, but it really hurts my heart. So leave me a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you feel like it, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!